back at the workshop now, just uh, getting some boxes ready. As you can see, everything is super green, super lush, but it's also cold and windy. Um, the last three days, we've actually had a lovely lot of rain, so uh, it's finished all the spring flowers. This is the hawthorn up here. There's still a tiny bit in flower, but when you look at the flowers, they're actually finished. You can see this is kind of always what we base our spring flow on, and the flowers are actually well open and they're completely finished now. There's no nectar on those. And the weather's too cold anyway for the bees to be out. However, we had a tiny window weather today and my AZ hive swarmed again. I haven't been in it to cut out any queen cells. So uh, it's produced two more nukes that have gone into that pile of hives over there. So that's quite entertaining, but uh, it's, it's the typical virgin swarm scenario where they're not very decided. There's not much queen pheromone in there and the bees are kind of deciding where they should go. They're all confused by the different hives and the mixed messages. And so we'll see what comes out of that, but that's a bit of fun. Uh, I had today in the post uh, by courier today, 25 queens arrived from Tenuta in Italy. Beautiful looking queens they are too. So guess what we're doing? So we're going to be now working in the workshop to get all the nukes ready because tomorrow I've got to go out and put those, uh, make some splits, but it's the perfect time because it's the end of the flow. So I brought all my things back, like my eeks that I use. Got two different types. That's just a standard wooden one. And that one's a bit more elaborate that my colleague made. We put together together. These are really good though. They actually take the roofs of our nuke boxes. So these are the nuke boxes. Inside, what I'm putting in is a frame of honey, is a feed frame. So the nukes aren't getting much of a clean, but the colonies you saw come out of these were all amazing. Um, I'm going to be uh, cleaning them out when this lot go into hives. That's my plan. And I've got another load of brand new hives, another hundred at the back there that are all boxed up still from last year I bought them. And they're going to be sprayed up over the late summer. And I'm hoping that I'm going to get bees into them into to either over winter or to use them next spring while the other ones have a clean and a complete bleach. So I've got a couple of lights put up here. It's a bit temporary, but it works just so I can work. But it is an absolute luxury having this building, even though it's not finished, uh, because I can get everything done that I need to in it. It's not ideal. I'm going to be extracting in the veranda again this spring. There's not a lot to extract, but then hopefully, as I said, we're going to have more to extract in the summer because everything is kind of looking that way if we get a summer flow. Regarding the continuing work on the um, all that flooring and that, that's all ongoing. My electrician came last week. We're going to get the sink all plumbed in, get water in first. And then we're going to continue working on the floor, getting the heating system in that so that hopefully at the end of the summer, I'll get the mezzanine in then. But I can't uh, do, any, do much more because it's me doing most of the work and I'm just too busy doing these bees, uh, managing stuff. I mean, 25 nukes is going to take me three or four days to get that done, as well as all the other stuff I still am trying to catch up on and keep, keep going on. This weekend, I've just spent uh, a good two days uh, rotivating, levelling land at home because where the septic tank was fitted, that was kind of all put back together by the digger guy and he did a great job. And he brought in nice topsoil and left the topsoil where the topsoil soil should be and moved the hardcore to where the hardcore should be and all that kind of stuff. But it still needed to be raked, levelled, rotivated. Uh, which we've done and now it's seeded so that part is done. It's the kind of thing that you like if you leave You get loads of really strong thick weeds growing much quicker than the grass But if you sow it with some grass you get a nice coverage you rake it all when you go over with a mower You don't ding your blade on like a thousand rocks. It's just work you have to do It is what it is, but I'm knackered um, Even though the rain and the crappy weather's given me a couple of days. I've actually been in side the built the house trying to do some more paperwork that i still haven't finished thank goodness i've got an accountant this year because they're doing all that side 
in France, our declaration de revenue, in other words, our tax declaration for our business and our own personal income is done in the end of May and it has to be all done by then. But they submit all that for you. So uh, that is done, but I'm just really busy doing other stuff. It, it's amazing how things compound because I'm trying to do work in the shed. I'm trying to, you know, continue, but I've actually run out of pallets in here, believe it or not, because I've got so many pallets in use with stuff on, but that will be cleared like this week because that's going to be all used and back out there with bees in it. Um, it's all kind of moving around, but my neighbour who bought me these pallets is going to bring me a load more because I still need more. Um, yeah, just loads going on. But getting back to the nukes, uh, last year I introduced queens into these with just a feed frame. And I feel I could have given them a better chance of doing well by giving them more than a feed frame. So what I'm going to do this year, because the flow has now stopped, um, the bees are going to be hungry when you make a split. So they will have a feed frame. They will have two frames of foundation. And, they, and in this box, so, which is six frames, I will give them also three frames of drawn comb, which I've taken out my winter dead out. So this is actually a resource that is going back into the hives that is a really good resource. So I might do, I'm not sure yet, I'm not sure of the configuration when I make these splits. I think I'm gonna put two frames back in and leave one frame of drawn comb in the nuke and then the other frame, don't forget two frames from the hive are coming into the hive from these nukes, so they will be drawn already. So I don't wanna to take too much from the production hive this time of year. It's that funny kind of dilemma. How much do you take from a split this year? If you take too much, you'll dent your potential honey crop. If you don't take enough, they still might swarm in the summer flow. But for us now, the swarming is basically finished. There's a period now we call the June gap, but for us, it's the mid-May to mid-June gap. And if, if we go into our colonies now as early as we can, so this week's perfect, I'm hoping gonna get more queens coming next week, but I don't know. And if I don't, it depends on the supply. And if I don't, then I'm going to raise a batch myself anyway. So we are gonna be, um, as I said, putting two drawn combs back into the colony so the queen can lay back into that really quickly without having to draw up. They won't need much comb building sorry much wax building bees because the combs are already built okay so they'll just clean them out and that means that i'm not asking them to draw this up whereas the queen that arrives in the post that came today will be quite happy to draw a bit because there'll be a young colony strong but i'm not going to use the partition in these nukes because I just feel that every time I do, the biggest problem I have is, is finding time to yank out the partition because it's not going to be too cold and they've got syrup if they want to burn it to keep warm and they're going to be a colony growing quickly and the flow will start again in six weeks. So that's what I'm going to do. So at the moment, my, my configuration is one frame of, one frame of honey that is from overwintered hives or dead outs which is clean or stuff you pulled out from somewhere else but a frame of a, a physical frame of feed that's there so the bees can liquefy that and use it at least two frames of foundation and another three combs drawn if you've got it complete luxury to have that so you're putting these two back in the colony and I will probably put a frame of foundation back into the other, in the other colony if I take a frame of feed out so they can rebuild that. But overall, I'm getting these all ready now so that I can um, go out over the next few days and just keep going. I've made up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got all these to, to they just came back yesterday, all those to use there. Uh, and all those, those all there are full of frames. You can see I had one that got rained on and the humidity has caused the honey to leak out onto the floor, which is not happy, which has detracted bees. But I've also got a load outside that are all just come back as well. So they're all ready to be used. So they're just waiting to be cleaned out as best we can. And then we get on with those. It's just a question of getting the equipment, cleaning all out and moving on. I did get a load of buckets today. My ex-colleague went up to our beekeeping supplier. I bought some of these small buckets because I'm sick of having no buckets to clean 
and to scoop off uh, honey from a barrel and to wash my hands and have a cloth in a bucket. I wanted some decent buckets that are going to be a bit more solid. So I got these. I also got some new gloves. Uh, two. Four pairs. I thought I was going to get three. Good. Okay, we've got four pairs. That covers me a lot. And we've got some bigger buckets here that are going to be for feed. These are feed buckets that I use all the time. I've got some at the back there as well. You can see over there. But these are extra because when I go and get my feed, I want to mix up a load of feed with thymol in it. Or I want to mix one to one. And the bottom buckets there, 40 kilo buckets for storing honey in or wax cappings. I just haven't got enough of those. So I'm kind of... Um, Watching the money, I've got to be a bit careful. I've got a nice big order going out this week of two barrels of honey. That's in jars. So that will be a good bit of income. And I'm actually starting to stock my local boulangerie with honey this weekend. I'll be taking the first order down there. So it's quite exciting for me. Even though my pots and my brand isn't ready, I'm going to be stocking them uh, with a first load of honey. So I'm really excited about that. No, it's not Ian Stepler feeding his... Ultra B or whatever he feeds to his bees in the spring, it is just robbing. This is exactly confirmation that our flow is over. This is what we get. The bees go from really nice to absolutely hell for leather, getting whatever they can. It's not a bad thing because I've got loads of supers with a little bit of honey left in, and to be honest, I'm glad they're taking it. Um, I almost feel I want to bring 50 supers here tomorrow to get robbed out because it will help clean them out it'll get you used anyway but it's i like starting with clean supers every year i haven't got that luxury at moments i haven't been through them all as usual no time too much going on with the building but a week ago that wouldn't have been evident you'd have struggled to find three or four bees over those supers i've just come with them in the back of the truck now it's absolutely alive with them so i've been making up these nukes uh, i've used actually six queens already but two of them have gone in over there into a pushing cage. These are my pushing cages I'm using. As you can see, completely prepared and ready and clean. Da -da. They've just been in this box since last summer and it was under a tree and it all got dried out after it rained on. And there you go, but there you go. That's my pushing cages, the hardware cloth. They work pretty well. You just push it in over a patch of emerging brood that also has a little bit of nectar with it so the queen can drink and the nurse bees coming out can feed her afterwards so they will get pretty used to it these are the cages once the bees have gone if you see tenuta has their own mark on it yeah it's their very own uh, um what do you call their um there you go tenuta retiro their very own label on each cage are pretty good. So these cages are um, filled with candy. And one side there's a, a tight chicane so only the bees can get in. The other side there's a place where the queen can get out. So if she wants to stay in the cage, bees coming in can still greet her or see her or get used to her. But if she wants to get out and feels confident, she can walk out through this way when the candy's gone, obviously. But I'm going to keep these ones because I haven't broken the tabs because I'm using them under a pushing cage instead and I can use them for my own queens uh, so they're quite useful to have but I'll keep them moist in a bag and the candy should stay soft you know this, but uh, getting back to this this is um, kind of exactly what I expected but way more so it just shows us how many bees there are here actually but it's pretty exciting pretty frenzied I haven't seen this for a long time we didn't even have this last summer because there were so many Asian hornets the bees were afraid to be out and leave their colonies so it's kind of a good sign to see that at the moment and live and let live kind of thing. So now I'm just going to go and make a couple more. We're already like half past five. We had a late start to the day and it's still cloudy, but it did rain uh, before. So we had to stop and then start again. It's been one of those days where just doing what we can, but it's tricky. So I've got all these nukes ready to be used for splits. I've got a load more at home, as you know. I'm just doing the best I can and getting through what I can as quick as I can. Tomorrow's only going to be 14 degrees, but it looks like sunshine. So where you get an apiary like this, where it's actually sheltered, the wind is coming from that way, and it, you get sunshine this side, so we're actually okay to work here. So I should be able to use probably by half of the queens by tomorrow, I hope. 
and then I can go somewhere else. I know where I've got other, other colonies to split and check. So, on with the work. Just using the old queen excluder trick to try and shake some of these bees through the queen excluder to find the queen before she goes, but I don't think she's here. But the box is packed. I honestly don't think she's swarmed, but um, this is one way of finding out if she's there. She could still be in the box I've just made underneath. So I'm going to shake bees back in from those frames until I find her or find a queen. If there's none, they both get a queen. All takes time, but at least I will have a good colony. Lots of drones here. Lots of beautiful drones. It's always good to have a queen excluder handy because it just gives you that little edge. The bees are so nice anyway because they're in swarm mode. And incidentally, when you find a colony that's about to swarm, it hasn't gone yet, you'll know because no matter where you put them in the apiary, no bees fly. They just stick where you put them. So the queen is marked and she's not turning up here. So I'm pretty sure that she's either gone or died or whatever, but, or she's somewhere else in the box underneath. So queen under a pushing cage. A couple of things you do first, you get your cage ready. Like me, you've gone through this all the night before, got them all ready, all nice and clean, lol. Not, that one looks pretty patent. I like to make sure that the sides are really vertical because when you come to push it in, it really does uh, help. So you can choose your spot before you even get ready. So this is emerging brood here. You can see these bees are just hatched out and they're back filling with nectar as usual, but not badly, plenty of room for the queen. There was a queen in this colony, there's larvae there. So all this is good, but I know this will hatch out. There's a bee emerging there, just starting. So that is good. So we're gonna put the cage probably because there's nectar there and there's lots of, I want lots of nurse bees around these queens. Okay, we're gonna put that like that. So let's go and find a queen. So here's my queens in a cage. There's a lot of nurse bees in this. So I'm just gonna go into my cab because I'm not stupid. I've lost a few that have flown. There she is. You've got a nice dot on her. You can follow her around the inside of these tinuta cages quite easy. So it's great when you undo the lid. So you can start letting them out if you want. You can do this and you know, you can risk catching her. But if you want to get a queen muff, good on you. If you want to be sure that you're not going to lose your queen. The great thing about this hole is when you do want to let one or two bees out, it might take a few, a few seconds, maybe a couple of minutes. The queen will eventually come out and you can grab her. But if you don't do that, get yourself a queen muff, go inside, take your queen out. and do it a different way. Cause you do not want to let that queen fly because she will be off. There she is. Beautifully marked. We've got these, Tanuta got these lovely bright pink dots now, which I absolutely love. So there we are, we got the queen. You could clip her now, but I'm going to do my clipping this time. I'm going to start clipping at the end of the summer when I cage with my queens, I've got to find them all anyway. So, There's the place I want it. There's loads of young nurse bees. Maybe there's better because there's nectar there and there's emerging bees as well. So you've got to, you put her on the frame and she grabs the frame like that, okay? Show her the, show her the comb. Just there, you can see her, she's seeing the comb there. Then you've got a few seconds just to, she's under. She'll have a bit of a hissy fit at the start and I can't say I blame her. I'm just gonna move it across a little bit more. She's got nectar there. Use your hands, once you've got all the comb vertical, all the sides vertical and all even, use your hand evenly so you can press down evenly. And that's the best way to put in a frame, a, a comb, a, cage, a pushing cage, sorry. Because you're pushing in evenly and it's done. She's got good access. This is a nice frame, there's nectar, there's young bees emerging, there's pollen, there's larvae. The bees are gonna be interested in this frame. It's gonna attract nurse bees. It's gonna attract an interaction. When these bees, under, these bees underneath here hatch out, those bees are gonna to wanna to be with this queen on the outside and the inside, because it's the only person they know. So let's go and put this in. But that's how you cage a queen fairly safely. I would do it with a queen muff. 
if you're not happy, because if you lose a queen, that's 35, 40 euros gone. But I get to keep these cages now because the tab isn't broken and they're useful to have. There you go. So there's the queen. She's having a drink of some honey under that pushing cage on emerging brood. Not sure if you can see the lights are really poor here, I'm afraid. There you go. She's under there. All is good. So this is the third frame of this split. In that goes. So a really good day today. I'm just, it's uh, nearly nine o'clock now. I'm just on my way to pick up these nukes that I made today. I managed to get, or well, to make, uh, I think 19 splits in the last two days. And I've got in the two extra coins. So it's 20, 21, and I've got four left. So four more queens to get in tomorrow or to use tomorrow. But uh, I'm finding a few things that have swarmed, which I expected, but to be honest, a lot better than I imagined because everybody is having massive swarming issues, regardless of what preparation you do, regardless of what queens you have. Um, but for us now, the flow is over. I'm beginning to find torn down cells which is absolutely brilliant. These nukes are all still closed, so I can go and pick them up whenever I want. But I had to go back home to the truck because I'm taking, say, 19 out to restock an apiary completely. The one I cleared the other day, uh, that was on the hillside, right out a place called Padiliac, where um, it's all forest. And this will restock a complete apiary. I only hope they all, obviously, are good. I managed to kill one queen, putting her under the pushing cage but that's because I moved and I then thought she was flying and wasn't and I, when I put her down I guillotined her head on which unfortunately is the nature of the beast when you're using queens like that but anyway another nice evening we've been so lucky with the weather today we had a brilliant um, window in the weather and where we are in this apiary this is basically behind my house by about two kilometres uh, where I've got the nuke yard and, and also a load of bees. Um, long story short, it was excellent and we did really well. We were really lucky to get the work we did done today. So I'm really pleased. I've just got to reverse down this muddy track, but where I reverse to is actually fairly, fairly hard. So that's good. Let's get all these loaded up, then we'll get them out. Just where I was the other day with that hay, still not cut, but I think they're waiting for a window in the weather because it's just not hay drying weather. But anyway, there's all the nukes that I made, all loaded on. They're all off to an apiate pladiliac. Should be good. Hoping that uh, they all get accepted, these queens, and we will see what happens when we release them in a few days' time. But let's go and get these all the way out there. All that is to go back home to be cleared up. It's just that this time of year when there's so much gear when you're a beekeeper, just trying to get on top of it is just uh, hard graft. Right, off we go. Ah. Well, the end of a long day. That's 18 nukes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, out. All these queens are under pushing cages. There's good colonies. They'll need a feed this week before I even go in to look at them. We might have a few losses, obviously, but overall, at least I've got bees back here now. This April is, is as good as full. Now, I really like this April. This is another one I call Chestnut Land as well. It is, you can see there's the chestnut trees there. They are still way off flowering, like another four and a half to five weeks. So by the time those queens start uh, being released, they should be out next week and laying, and we should get at least a couple of brood cycles in 
before the trees start and then when they do it just continues and they really get going but they're really good queens they're freshly mated from tenuta so fingers crossed it works out well but at the end of the day i've got my numbers back up well i'm nearly there back up to my 200 which is brilliant and by next week i should be another 25 then but anyway uh that's it for this week that's what i've been doing it's all really really knackering but i'm loving it because i feel i'm doing stuff and we've got a little window in the weather just to get stuff done makes it worthwhile whatever you're doing i hope you have a good end to the week and i'll catch you again soon bye for now